so uh, this is the second class on ir filters so in the previous class we were discussing about the bilinear transformation and uh, the kind of impact it will have right the tan mapping the tan mapping uh, a tan inverse mapping sorry so that was you know warping effect as we called it so as a solution what we have to do uh, we have to negate the effect of uh, the tan inverse thing by applying a tan function to the frequencies okay so what does it contain a bilinear transformation design procedure what does it contain so the first step would be given the digital specification pre warping Prevert the digital specifications to the corresponding analog frequency specification. So the first thing what you will be doing is this particular formula you will be applying. Okay, uh, anything uh, D is the digital frequency which will be given. So you have to uh, prevert it to get the corresponding analog. Why analog? Because it's the analog filter that we designed for, right? So in case of uh, bandpass filters, you will have to do it for a bandpass filter. You will contain two parameters: the lower and the upper cut of frequencies. Okay, hmm. so you will have to uh, do that, and it comes with the one more term: the bandwidth, the larger frequency minus the smaller frequency, and then there is a center frequency, which is root of the minimum frequency multiplied by maximum frequency. That's the first step. Uh, what's the next step? Yeah, now we want your uh, equivalent pre-war analog frequencies. Now, uh, go ahead and uh, design your uh, low-pass filter from the template. One divided by uh, what was that? Uh, S plus one. What, what was that formula? Wait a second. Let me take the formula. It's been long time, right? Uh, where is the highest? Uh, yes, uh, one divided by S plus one. This is the formula. This is a typical low pass filter okay typical low pass filter as we saw if at all uh, they are high pass filter so s shall be replaced by uh, omega c by s if the band pass filter so depends okay so that would be our uh, second step okay so perform the transformation and then um, if at all it's a low pass filter other than cutoff frequency of one you have do that if it's a high pass filter then this uh, formula if it's a band pass and then a band gap filter once you are done with the entire design of H of X, the final stage will be simply replacing the S by this particular formula 2 by 10 to Z minus 1 divided by Z plus 1. There, your digital filter transfer function is ready. Once you get the transfer function, difference equation also will get implemented. It's also easy. Okay. So, uh, let us see. Uh, they have given a simple example here. Okay. It's a normalized low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of one radian per second. Okay, so he has given it uh, directly. It's a first order filter. Okay, it's a first order filter. That's a one divided by s plus one. As you can see, if it all uh, s square, it was then it would have been a second order filter. Okay, so uh, we have been asked to design a filter. Okay, using bilinear transformation with a cutoff frequency of 15 hertz. Uh, cutoff frequency of 15 hertz means what we have to do? The S shall be replaced by the corresponding S by omega. Okay, let us see what is the formula. Sampling frequency has been given. Why sampling frequency? Because there is this T, right? So we need sampling frequency also. So what is the first thing that we have to do? The first thing that we have to do is everything has been in terms of omega, right? The radial frequency. That's why convert our frequencies, uh, if at all they are in given in hertz, we convert them to radians by multiplying by 2 pi but there you go t equal to 1 by uh, sampling frequency okay t equal to 1 by sampling uh, frequency 1 by 90 it was part of the question now the first step right three steps right first step is pre warping second one is the design of the analog filter then third one is applying bilinear transformation okay anything tricky here no it's a simple formula 2 divided by t t equal to 1 by 90 tan of uh, omega d which is uh, now you got into t divided by 2 okay there we got a digital uh, frequency 103.92 okay so what is this frequency by the way uh, what is this analog frequency 
this was 30 into pi pi is 3.14 okay pi was 3.14 so it was uh, around uh, 95 or something so here we have got little more okay 103.90 doesn't matter uh, let us uh, stick to the formula and uh, blindly uh, follow added to the rules okay next is uh, performing the prototype uh, transform, uh, transformation okay so we have to convert this uh, uh, 1 divided by s plus 1 into something specific as per the requirements of my filter with a cutoff frequency of 15 hertz so how do we do this s is replaced by s by omega okay so okay so uh, see you can see here uh, this is what we got uh, the rule is the denominator that should be a single numerator by a single uh, denominator that's it now we simply apply the bilinear transformation s is replaced by the thing and uh, what do we get okay uh, here we have it so replacing s by z to the power minus one so h of z you got your digital transfer function usually it doesn't end there okay so when you substitute this is where it takes a lot of time and uh, if at all uh, you have a very lengthy problem then you should it needs a lot of time and, but there are some clever ways of doing it see uh, multiplying the numerator and denominator by um, z plus one okay no there is no shortcut you have to go through all the steps here finally when you get your h of z the rule is the first term in the denominator this term has to be one all the terms shall be negative powers of z okay terms shall be negative powers of z to get the difference equation to be a causal thing okay that's it that's the end of a, a numerical okay so uh, what sort of numerical uh, let us see once again so you were given you were given this particular uh, problem of uh, you know uh, cutoff uh, filter with a cutoff frequency of 15 hertz and a sampling rate of 90 so you took the template was given you are supposed to remember this anyway you uh, first step was pre warping you did then after s was replaced by s by omega a as per your uh, requirement not a you know a filter with cutoff frequency one right then bilinear transformation was applied the transformation takes a lot of time usually there is mathematics involved okay hmm? so once you are uh, done with this thing um, then so here okay Okay, so now uh, let us see a digital Butterworth filter design. If this is digital Butterworth filter design, what did we do just now? See, in the previous numerical, we were uh, given the order, right? But sometimes the specification should be given and you will have to derive the order. Okay, so uh, that's what this particular topic is all about. So here there are certain formulae. Okay, so this is the prototype uh, filter thing. AP is the passband attenuation, AS is the stop band attenuation in dB. So, uh, based on this, the formula has been derived. Formula has been derived. So, here you can see these two formulae are what we are supposed to be interested in. Okay. So, if at all you are given the passband attenuation, the stop band attenuation, and this term ripple, which can be calculated from stop band attenuation, we can. Uh, you know, uh, determine the order. Okay, hmm. we can determine the order, and once we are done with determination of the order, then uh, next thing would be uh, we have a ready reference table. We have a ready reference table for the transfer function of uh, either a second order filter, or third order filter, or a fifth order filter. Let us give it a try. Let's give it a try. Here is a numerical. So design a digital low pass butterworth filter with the following specifications. Are you getting the difference between the previous numerical and this one? Here we have to determine the order. They have given the specifications. So what sort of filter is this? Explicitly mentioned a low pass filter. Okay. 3 dB attenuation in the pass band, 10 dB attenuation in the stop band. Remember, 3 dB in the pass band is fine. 10 dB in the stop band is a very lesser uh, attenuation, but just to keep a numerical simple the simple examples will be given in the textbooks otherwise a professional uh, you know uh, filter design will have a very high stop band attenuation anything more than 15 not 15, 
20 minimum. Okay. Anyway, uh, let us treat it as a problem. Okay. 3D by attenuation in the pass band. That means uh, pass band attenuation AP will be uh, 3 minus 3. A is the stop band attenuation S, uh, how much? Uh, 10 dB. Then afterwards, sampling frequency is 8000 hertz. So, which are the uh, formulae that come into picture? The one for the uh, values epsilon, which we will be substituting here. A second one is this particular, uh, what is this? Mu S. What is this mu S thing, by the way? Mu S is uh, you know, a normalized, a normalized filter because this particular. Uh, uh, anyway, let's just go ahead and uh, see a numerical. Okay, so what we will be doing usually, if at all, say I have a filter. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, yeah. So uh, here is a table. Yeah, the third thing that we need is this particular table. Let us hope in the exam, if at all the DSP numerical uh, on filter pops up, we will be provided with this particular table. Otherwise, also I request you to remember at least the polynomial for up to a third order okay up to third order you remember the a polynomial shouldn't be that difficult okay so now usually say i have been given a filter with a pass band cutoff frequency with a pass band cutoff frequency of 100 and a stop band cutoff frequency say pass band cutoff frequency at minus 3 okay minus 3 and a stop band cutoff frequency say at minus 10 and say this is uh, 200 okay and I want it to be converted into a filter. I want it to be converted into a normalized filter. A normalized filter typically has a pass band cutoff frequency of one. Then the stop band cutoff frequency shall be equally normalized. So that number would be 200 divided by 100. That would give me two. Okay. So this is what that uh, new thing that was uh, shown. Okay. Hmm. Let us see now. Let us go and see the numerical. Since this is a video, I think you can always, you know, um, come back and uh, check this thing once again. So here is our numerical. Okay, three dB attenuation um, at the one point five kilohertz, ten dB attenuation at frequency of uh, three kilohertz, sampling frequency of eight thousand hertz. First thing that we do, which we usually forget, is to convert them from hertz to radians by multiplying by two pi. Okay. You can keep pi as it is. You can keep pi as it is. Okay. Hmm. Uh, it will be helpful usually. Okay. Uh, in your calculator also. Hmm. Keep pi as it is. T equal to 1 by fs. Now see here the frequencies, the pre war frequencies you got. And this is what I was talking about normalizing the stop band cutoff frequency with respect to pass band cutoff frequency so that if at all pass band cutoff frequency is 1.069 into 10 to the power 4, stop band cutoff frequency is 3.86 into 10 to the power 4. If at all I say my pass band cutoff frequency is 1, then proportionately my stop band cutoff frequency will be something like uh, omega s divided by omega p. So it is 3.6. Sensible enough, right? Uh, sensible enough, I guess. So uh, that's that. Okay. So once we are ready, so these are the two formulae. So you can see, luckily, the epsilon value has is uh, turned out to be one. Okay. Hmm. So since most of your numericals will have this uh, ripple factor as one, ripple factor, I guess. Okay. One, hopefully, this kind of problems only come. And then based on the formula for order, it has been substituted here. And uh, look what we got 0.8553. That means uh, round it to the uh, next. Uh, integer value. So my order of the filter is one, a first order filter. What's the template for a first order filter? Shall we going to go and see that particular table? Yeah, here uh, it's a standard template one divided by S plus one. Let us use it. Let us use it. So uh, see the first order filter if you have has been taken, then afterwards you have to convert it from uh, from normalized filter onto the filter of our choice S by Omega P. Okay. Hmm. S by Omega P. What is this Omega AP, by the way? Uh, wait a second. Shall we see? We'll go back to okay. uh, here. Omega P is this particular uh, pass band uh, cutoff frequency. Okay. So, yes. So, here we substitute the parameters uh, to get the numerical denominator first order. Yes. Then we apply the bilinear 
transformation 2 by t that explains the number 16000 for a sampling frequency of 8000 we substituted it here and it's going to take some time it's going to take some time so here some shortcut again uh, what has been done is uh, you know numerator and denominator have been divided by 16000 you have your own shortcuts by the way so there we have it so finally you know how we are uh, expecting an h of z to look like so finally our h of z should be in a form so that the first number in the denominator has to be one so this ends it from this h of z you can even get a difference equation you can also get the direct form one and direct form two implementations also okay next uh, what sort of uh, okay so here now let us see a second order filter here uh, once again a directly a second order filter uh, a problem has been given so i do not think uh, we need this uh, formula because order has been given directly but uh, what's the deal with a second order filter let us see what's the, deal, what's the thing with a second order filter by the way in your textbook so see here this is the table i was uh, talking about for an epsilon value of one this table doesn't hold good for different epsilon of 0.5 or 1.5 okay hmm. okay so let us go ahead so what do you think uh, what's the issue how do we do this thing anything missing no uh, pass one cutoff frequency has been given sampling frequency has been given so we do not need two frequencies like pass band and cutoff stop and cutoff frequencies we don't even need the normalization thing because order is uh, readily available so maybe we simply have to pre bar as you can see uh, wait a second now we have gone to band pass filter sorry uh, yeah here okay so uh, what we have to do the first step is uh, converting the frequencies in terms of radians per second from hertz then afterwards applying the free bar thing and uh, then afterwards substitution from the table okay substitution of our uh, second order filter from the table then afterwards applying the low pass to low pass transformation then afterwards uh, the bilinear transformation okay then afterwards what you have to do the bilinear uh, transformation and it's not as easy as it is Told, okay you have to do your uh, homework okay you have to do your homework okay so now uh, let us come to a second order filter so not so challenging here uh, second order it's been explicitly uh, exclusively mentioned sorry but then uh, anything tricky yes the moment you say second order band pass filter there are two frequencies lower cutoff and upper cutoff okay now let us see so what are the steps yes then uh, you know uh, frequency converted to radians free warping and when you say band pass filter you have to get the center frequency you can see this is the center frequency okay and then afterwards uh, there is the bandwidth okay center frequency and there is bandwidth so you can see this was there these two terms were there in the uh, formula for uh, low pass to band pass transformation okay so so let's uh, continue so there we have it uh, it was a, a second order filter so this is what we were uh, supposed to uh, substitute okay hmm. the substitute so uh, there is a statement made here what do they say we perform a prototype transformation low pass to band pass from we pick the low pass prototype filter with order one to produce a band pass filter with order two so let me clarify here a typical band pass filter is implemented by having a high pass filter usually say of first order now you say if at all i have a band pass filter of order two it contains a high pass filter of order one with one number element and a low pass filter see here the so first half here is a high pass filter the second half is a low pass filter which is also this of order one this of order one so together they give me a second order band pass filter so that is why here for transformation we take a first order low pass prototype remember this is a very important step we shall not simply refer the table and pick a second order filter because every band pass filter of a second order indicates low pass filter of first order it's same is the case with uh, band reject filters also okay so 
I hope this is clear. So we'll apply the transformation. So you can see low pass to band pass transformation in this particular formula. Omega naught is known. We calculated uh, W, the bandwidth is also known. And when we substitute, this is what will end up getting. You can see S has been replaced by S square. So this is our second order band pass filter. Then afterwards, bilinear transformation is applied. And uh, you can see this is where a filter problem takes a lot of time. Two things can save you. Familiarity with the expected answer, that can save some time. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you know, you are uh, comfort with algebra. Okay. Hmm. So that was a band pass filter. Okay. Well designed band pass filter. Then finally, there is a band stop filter. Uh, there is a numerical on band stop filter even in your model question paper. I thought it's not so convincing. So that's why let me come to that later. So then here is a topic which is there in your syllabus attached to this particular unit only. Realization of structure. I remember doing this in the classroom, but anyway, let me just run through this. So what sort of structures? The direct form one and the direct form two structures. Okay, there can be four types of structures usually. There is direct form one structure, direct form two structure, there is cascade structures and then there are parallel structures. Okay, so they are the kind of structures which you will usually uh, come across. Okay, they are the kind of things that you will usually uh, come across. So let us see, uh, how do we uh, do this? So if at all you are given this particular transfer function. So basically the trick is to convert this, uh, equate this to y of z by x of z, equate it to y of z by x of z. Then afterwards uh, to do the cross multiplication, do the cross multiplication, get the inverse uh, z transform to get the difference equation, right? Uh, so again, I'm telling, as I discussed this earlier, I will not be going into much detail here. So usually it so happens. So the feed forward parts, the feed forward parts are corresponding to the numerator. The feedback parts are usually corresponding to the denominator. Okay. So first thing is uh, from this particular transfer function, you can directly arrive at this particular uh, structure. Okay. So the, you have to draw the feed forward parts and the feed parts part. The coefficients in the numerator, they constitute the constants in the Feed forward part, you can see 0.19 and uh, minus 0.19 with sign. Then in the feedback part, change in the sign. Observe the change in the sign for feedback part because this is uh, turns out to be y of uh, n minus 1, right? So that's why it's going to come on the right side. This, by the way, is the direct form one structure which usually consumes more number of d flip flops. You can see. Direct form two structure, by the way, looks a bit better. Usually, if at all, there is no thing mentioned. So it's always advised to go for direct form two structure. You can see here, this one is a direct form two structure with uh, all the feed forward parts drawn on the right side of this particular uh, tab taken for the uh, delay elements and feedback parts drawn for a change on the left side. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, there it was. Uh, so uh, realization in direct form and uh, direct form two. Okay. So here is uh, one more. What does this say? Okay. Well, there is a very interesting problem. A fourth order transfer function has been given. Realize the digital filter using the cascade. So as I told you, there can be direct form one structure. There can be direct form two structure. There can be parallel structures. There can be parallel structures, you know, uh, connected uh, like this, parallel structures, and then afterwards add it. All right, say this, I will call it as H1 of Z, hmm? and this I will call it as H2 of Z, or there can be cascade structures. Cascade is when they are connected in series. So when you say parallel, it is difficult. You have to express this as when uh, they ask you, you know, uh, second order sections, like this is cascade structure. That means in a cascade structure, you can simply get away by representing H of Z as H1 of Z multiplied by H2 of Z. Okay. So here H of Z is H1 of Z multiplied by H1 of Z multiplied by H2 of Z. So you get a lot of options here. You get a lot of options. It's always easy. Okay. So easy maths here. 
If at all they ask you parallel structures, then you will have to go for partial fraction expansion, and there you have to go for h one of z, h one of z plus h two of z. For parallel structures, it is h one of z plus h two of z. So that's the tricky thing because there parallel uh, partial fraction expansion, uh, you have to do find out the constant, and it is tricky. Okay, so this is first part of the whole complexity. The next thing very important here is that they are talking about second order section. Let us try to understand what is the um, what's the deal with this particular thing. You usually whenever you have some h of z, okay, say of fourth order, fifth order, you may have a transfer function of third order. You may have a transfer function of nineteenth order also. But then usually the memories whatever you want to implement, say they come in some fixed sizes. They come in say fixed sets. Maybe see here. These are all these are second order sections. Let me take you to the previous one. Let me take you to the previous uh, numerical. What is here? You can see here. This is the. These are first order sections. First order section means with only one memory element. Okay. Second order sections will have two memory elements. So now suppose you happen to have a filter to be implemented, which is of say seventh order. Then how are you going to do it? You will not get a ready IC maybe or a structure maybe for seventh order. So that you simply you know. Hardwire the shifting coefficients and get away. So that's why in such situation you may have to go for in such situation you may have to split the entire thing, represent them in series or in parallel. That means either in cascade or in a parallel. Okay. So uh, how are you going to do it? Depends on the requirement or this one. Depends on how uh, the question has been asked in exam. Okay. So that is the meaning of this second order section. If at all they ask you first order section, you have to convert it into Four transfer functions. Second order is easy. The next particular thing is you see the power of z here. Power of z. Okay, it has to be negative powers of z because the delay units is what you get, right? The memory units are usually delay units. You do not get a z to the power plus one or z to the power plus two, and you cannot simply jump. Okay, you have to have z to the power uh, minus one only. Okay, if at all you have to do z to the power minus two, you cannot draw a simple box of z to the power minus two. You have to have Z to the power minus one once, Z to the power minus one uh, twice. So okay. hmm. that's how it works. So here the changes what have been made. See here. So it was very simple. This one, one of them was converted as H one offset, another one was taken as H two offset. Dividing the entire thing. The rule is that the first coefficient in the denominator has to be one in both the cases, so that you can see this particular line here should be free from coefficient. So once you are done, it's all easy. See, you can see this is direct form one structure. Okay, this is a direct form one structure. If at all I draw this first and then I take these steps on this side, it becomes a direct form two structure. Okay. If nothing is asked, I simply ask to realize the filter using a second order section. You have to go for not direct form one realization, but always direct form two, unless they uh, want you to go for direct form one. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's that. Okay, that's that. So um, now, uh, what I will do is, so I have made this two videos briefly. So now you have to put some effort to go through the uh, numericals, go through the numericals. But most importantly, the kind of questions that might come here is very important here. So now that you have studied IIR filters also and FIR filters also, you might be knowing the difference between IIR and FIR. Uh, that's the first thing you might be knowing what are the advantages of ir filter and the disadvantages of ir filters then after the transformation how are you going to convert a prototype filter into a low pass high pass band pass or bandwidth filter what is the need for pre warping what is that warping effect okay hmm. that is the next thing and then after all you should be able to solve the numerical questions okay so uh, go through the videos uh, sit back relax uh, with a paper pen Okay, hmm? and uh, all the best.